Free Education Council is here to welcome Evan Peterson. He is a commodity trader and he's going to share his career journey with us. Thanks, Evan, and good luck. Yeah, thanks for having me. Am I ready? Hold on a sec till you see your screen on the. Uh, thank you for reaching out. Uh, just a quick introductory of myself. So I know Troy, he was my high school football coach, my high school principal, our phys ed teacher, shop teacher, biology teacher. It's kind of the joy of growing up in a small town is you, um, the principal teaches as well. So that's always nice. Um, I'm excited today to talk about my role um, as a commodity trader uh, with JGL Commodities. Um, you know, I really hope today I can inspire somebody out there, you know, to, to look into what we do and, you know, reach out and, you know, if there's a, a young grain trader in the making, I'm hopefully uh, can influence him here. Um, there's, you know, the one thing I kind of want to get through to the youth is that there's more, you know, there's more to the egg industry than selling chemical, retail, fertilizer, soil sampling. This is a whole other side of it that gets, uh, you know, widen things out you talk to more producers directly and allows you to buy and sell grain and make some money you know in the middle there so you know it's an interesting job and here we go so to introduce myself i grew up on a mixed grain and cattle farm near central butte um my dad my uncle and my twin brother run the farm currently uh, i try to stay as actively involved as possible out there um you know in the busy times i try to get out there and help out as much as i can um I live in Saskatoon here with my lovely wife, Megan, and we have two children. Um, Elliot, our little boy, is two, and we just welcomed a baby girl named Clara, and she is four weeks old uh, tomorrow. So after high school, I attended the University of Saskatchewan. Um, the goal was to set out to get an egg degree. Um, I took a break in the middle. I uh, kind of figured the social life of university was a little more important, so I got told to maybe go take a break. and. Uh, figured out on my own. So into the workforce for a little while. After doing that for a couple of years, I realized I think I should get back into school and get a degree and kind of see where this takes me. Um, so in 2015, I obtained my uh, Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness degree from the U of S. And so what agribusiness is versus, you know, soil science and agronomy, it's a little more on the economic side. Um, of agriculture and some finance and some accounting classes in there as well. Just a little more of the business side, you know, stay on the egg side of it, stay in the egg area of the university while taking some business classes on the sides. So a uh, great course, highly recommend it. A lot of great profs and met a lot of awesome people there as well. Uh, I started with JGL in uh, January of 2016 as a junior trader. So just to touch briefly on who JGL is. So JGL Commodities White Work Force is a sister company of the JGL group of companies. So what JGL consists of is we have JGL Livestock, who is you know, the largest cattle trading company in Western Canada. If you have cattle on your farm, there's a good chance JGL has purchased your cattle. Uh, we also have Canadian Cattle Buyers Credit, which is called CCBC. Um, they finance cattle and feed for feedlots and feeder operations, cattle operations all around Western Canada. Uh, we have Hawks Agro, who is a crop input company. Um, and then we also have Egg First Financial, who finances egg inputs now, and they just went up and running here for a year and a half, maybe two years. Uh, so yeah, JGL definitely has something for everybody. So if anyone's interested, feel free to reach out on, on any side of the industry. Uh, so my duties, what I do with JGL is I'm a trader. So what I'm doing is I'm always talking to producers and end users, uh, producers being the farmers, end users being feedlots in Southern Alberta primarily, um, who are finishing cattle for slaughter. So they're trying to gain weight on these cattle to a finishing uh, weight and then sell them into the packers. So we have farmers call in, say they have barley for sale, feed wheat for sale, and we work a price and uh, we pick it up, fob the farm, which is freight on board, and we deliver it to the end user. Um, so what I do is to come up with these prices, the guys call in, we have what is called a bid. And a bid is whatever we can sell grain for at any given time. So if I know that a farmer lives in Saskatoon, 
I know I can sell barley today for 275 bucks a ton delivered Lethbridge. I work back to that freight, which I know, you know, is $3.60, give or take, per metric ton per loaded mile, which will give us about a $35 rate. And I'm going to try to make a $5 margin on that trade. So that works back to $235 a metric ton or $5.10 picked up for, uh, for barley. Um, so as I started with JGL, I was a junior guy, um, you know, trying to trade anything I could get my hands on. Uh, Kita Canola was, was a big one, screenings, byproducts. And with a little bit of hard work and some dedication, um, you know, I got a little more involved in the day-to-day -day trade. And within two years, I was actually assigned the position of uh, managing the feed wheat and the feed barley positions at JGL. Um, so now what I do is I kind of oversee all of the purchases and all the sales we have. I, you know, I, I run daily reports on where we own grain and where we have it sold uh, just to match things up to make sure that we're, we're shipping it to the right places. Um, it's ultimately up to me to make the decision whether we're going to go long on a position or short. So long meaning that we, you know, we own more grain than we have sold, anticipating the price is going to go up or a short, which is the opposite, which we have more sold than we own anticipating the price is going to go down and we can buy it cheaper at a later day. Um, so one thing I always do is every morning I come in and we have market reports that come out that kind of run the, you know, from what the futures are doing up to that minute. Um, so I'm reading those. I'm trying to gain information on the market um, to decide what we need to be selling grain for, where we need to be buying it and how we game plan, you know, around these, these decisions that I make. Um, you know, we have, uh, I believe there's 11 traders, 11 traders now that I'm in constant uh, conversations with, a lot of time on the phone, making sure that we all have the same game plan in mind um, and that we all stick to the, to the task at hand. Um, you know, with this job, you know, it's, it's a lot of office time. You're sitting at a desk, you've got computer screens in front of you, you got a cell phone and your phone's ringing. So kind of that's what we do for eight, nine, 10 hours a day sometimes. Um, so yeah, our office workspace, literally we have a computer, office phone, cell phone. Um, our office layout is an open concept. So we do this for communication. So, you know, we're not going to get that big fancy office that, you know, some people might, you know, look forward to having, but we keep an open communication. We have a, a logistics team that books our trucks and we got more traders all around us. So we are in uh, constant communication with everybody. So some of the unknowns uh, with, with trading grain is, you know, the majority of what we do is, yeah, we buy and we sell grain, um, but freight, freight is a big part of what we do. We cannot execute a trade without having a truck um, pull into that farmer's yard and physically load the grain for us and deliver it for us. So it's, we have a logistics team that consists of uh, uh, three, three people, in my office and one more down in the, in the States in our U S office. Um, and so what I'm doing with them is we are talking constantly. We have grain bought in certain market zones. We have it sold in different market zones as well. Like we, we sell grain all across Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta. So it's, it's my job and our job to keep an open communication to make sure that we're sending the correct purchases to the correct sales. Um, you never want to drive grain past a destination to get to another one. So it's very, very important to, um, to make sure we're paying attention to that and executing it the right way. Um, another thing that what we do here is managing AR, which is accounts receivable. Um, you know, we're selling large amounts of grain into guys that we don't necessarily know. We have a good relationship with everybody, but always someone calls in looking for something. And, you know, if you're going to sell someone $300,000 worth of grain, you got to do your due diligence and make sure that they're able to pay you for it. Uh, rewards. It's, it's a trading grain is very rewarding. I mean, there's an instant rush, you know, when you, when you can buy 50,000 bushels of something and call somebody and sell it and understand your freight and you can make some margin on top of it. And you know, that it's, it's a good day. Um, you know, as, as you get more into it, you actually begin to start to trade positions. So you take ownership in, in certain areas and you kind of put it all together and you figure out your replacement values and you can sell it as bigger packages, which is, 
you know, kind of the biggest goal and what we all get to, which makes it really rewarding when you can flip a whole position and make some margin while doing it. Um, yeah, so just the, the rush of doing that is, is pretty rewarding. Um, you know, working for a smaller company, we're pretty lucky. We have uh, yearly trade meetings that we do every year. Um, you know, usually we pick a different destination somewhere in the U.S. or Canada, and we go and we enjoy a sporting event of some sort with a couple of days of meetings. And what we do is we just kind of go over last year, how it went, where we can be better, and then we talk about goals and how we can um, be better in the future moving forward. Um, like I said, working with JGL, you're, we know everyone personally. So I know the owners, they know me by name. I can call them up any time of the day. We can have a conversation about life in general, family, whatever. <clears throat> you know, it's that personal relationship that makes it very rewarding to live here, to work here as well. And, you know, being a little bit of a smaller company, we do become like a second family being here. So it's nice going into the office with people that you really do consider a family versus just people that you have to go and work with all day. Um, we're not a number here. We're all known by name. Um, everybody chips in, everybody has a value. And, you know, we work hard for, you know, for what we, what we do here and everybody's recognized. Challenges and stressors, uh, challenge everyday markets. So as a grain trader, you have to be willing to put in the work to read into the markets. You have to understand what the markets are doing, why they're doing what they're doing. Um, feed prices are directly related to the futures board because corn and barley will trade hand in hand and same with wheat. So you have to understand what you can trade corn for in order to know where the cap is on your barley price, where the upside is on your feed prices and where the downside where the downside is as well. So it's something every single day, you know, that board comes on, we're watching, we're seeing what's happening, we're reading reports, and, you know, that board has a mind of its own sometimes. So it can do exactly the opposite of what you were thinking, which you need to be able to react and make an educated decision on what you want to do. But it's something that we, you know, we really, really do need to pay attention to do, which can be an extreme challenge sometimes when it is very volatile. Um, Weather. Weather is a big, big challenge with our job every day. So we are feeding, you know, cattle in Southern Alberta. We, on average, probably move about 300 truckloads a week of feed grain. So that's a lot of mouths that we're feeding. So when it's wet, you know, rain, snow, when trucks don't move because of yard conditions and because of roads, we fail on deliveries, which means that, you know, we could be technically shorting somebody their feed for the week, which is extremely stressful when someone calls you on a Friday saying they don't have enough grain to get through the weekend. So it's something we're always paying attention to. We're trying to keep guys kind of ahead of the curve, you know, keep those guys full and try to really pay attention to what's going on and when we're going to struggle possibly to move grain. Um, you know, January is a tough time. February, it's cold. Cattle need to eat to stay warm. When it's cold, equipment doesn't like to run. So it's pretty hard to execute, um, you know, deliveries at that time. And did you mean to skip over the salary and benefits? Oh, there we go. Uh, salary and benefits of a, a junior trader, you know, someone coming on with not much experience would start, you know, around that $60,000 mark starting. Um, you know, you slowly work your way, your salary up within a, you know, a few years of being successful and your salary will be around that, you know, $100,000 mark. As a trader, we try not to think about too much what the salary is. We try to think of our, our overall book and how the company is doing at the end of the year if things are well um, traders get paid out discretionary bonuses at the end of the year which can be quite rewarding so it all comes down to the, the working very hard putting in the time spending the hours getting into the office at 7 7 30 in the morning reading those reports getting on the phone calling farmers you know calling your feedlots finding out where the demand is what the supply is looking like on the other end and and grinding it out i mean as times you're sitting here in the summer and everyone's out golfing and having fun but you know we're sitting here by the end of the year if you work hard um you will be rewarded and uh you know it, it is very rewarding at the end of the year you know when that when that bonus does come um we do a full medical here um everything is covered that way we have programs or 
you know, that we, that we pay into. Um, we do have a pension program. So what, what GAGL does is they just take a percentage on top of your salary. You don't have to um, contribute anything to this. It's over and above your salary and they put it into an RSP for you. Um, honestly, just kind of forget about it and sits there and it builds interest over time. Holidays, holidays is interesting as a grain trader because we all need to get away. We all need to spend time with our families, not thinking about work, but as a trader and you know, the larger your desk gets, it's definitely, it's harder to not think about work when you're not at work. So even if you go to the lake for a week or if you have a nice hot trip booked for the winter, you are still, um, you know, you're still looking at your phone, you're still checking the board to see what it's doing, you're still checking emails, you're still touching in with guys, you're still reaching out and touching base with guys to see kind of what's going on out there. But, you know, we do try to get away for, you know, a few weeks a year. And uh, after a while, you'll learn, you can do a lot more from your, you know, your phone when you are on holidays and away from the office. Um, we understand when it's slow, we can get away. You know, summer's a little bit slower usually than the winter, so you can get out on the odd afternoon and go for, you know, around the golf or do whatever you want to do to get away. Um, just have to make sure you know when that right time is. Um, you know, we're eight to five, Monday to Friday. You know, earlier the better you get in, get a good start in the day. You get the odd call on the weekend and evenings, but, you know, that just comes with the job and you deal with them when the time comes. This isn't the kind of place you leave at five o'clock and turn your phone off and leave it in your truck till the next day. Um, your phone's on you. If it rings, you, you deal with the, the issue at hand. But that's just part of what we do. Uh, personal development here. You know, you, you get out of this job what you, you, what you put into it. So personal development is all about, you know, getting into work, put, putting in the work and understanding what's going on in the industry, getting your name out there, understanding the trade, and, you know, you develop into all of a sudden trading your own desk. And then you start to see, you know, your, you know, your earnings for the company start to, to grow, you know, within a couple of years, which is uh, very rewarding. Um, we do have goals every year. We set out the start of the year. We sit down. We put trade goals out. You know, we're, we're ever changing them. Um, but, yeah, semi-annually we do sit down um, with our general manager. We go over these goals and we are constantly – like I said, we're constantly going over them. We're constantly changing them and, uh, you know, just trying to grow, grow for the better. For the must get caught the odd time we've overbought this grain and now it's it's gone down and so we got to sell it at a loss but i'm sure most of the time you you've worked in a margin that's reasonable that can keep you yep. at least even right yeah definitely the biggest the biggest thing you have to get your head wrapped around is when you're offside when to get out of it and just making that decision and saying we're going to move on with it we're going to forget it and we're going to we're going to move on. But yeah, we always have a certain amount of margin. Like we're trying to build as a trader, when you're, when you're trading, you're trying to make five to eight dollars a metric ton on a trade. So our idea here is lots of volume with tight margins, right? So we're all about volume here. We're trying to move as much grain as possibly or as possible. But um, yeah, there's definitely a time where you've overbought a bunch of grain thinking the price is going to do something. And then the market shift on you and you need to be able to get out of it. And the rule of thumb we have as a trading company is never take on a position that you cannot get out of with one phone call. So make sure that if you're going to take a chance, you're going to take a risk and you're going to go and get long, you know, 150,000 bushels of grain, you make sure that if things start turning, you can make one phone call and get rid of that. You don't want to sit on it for, 
days or weeks and watch this thing tumble because then you will see some serious losses. It's a good strategy. Yeah. I have a question for you, Evan. Um, what kind of, um, like as a student listening to this presentation, um, what kind of personality enjoys this type of job? How would you even think about becoming a commodities trader when you're in high school? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it takes somebody kind of like me, like I kind of think of myself as a little bit of, you know, of maybe a little high strung, a little, you know, someone who's always on the go. Like with our job, we're not going to be outside checking crops, driving around. We're going to be at our desk. We're going to be picking up the phone. We're going to be calling guys. Um, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be, uh, we're based on relationships here. So while we're getting trust from our farmers and from our end users. So, you know, if that, that outgoing kid that's sitting there in class that might not know what they're trying to do, but, you know, loves to talk to people, loves to be, you know, I don't want to say the center of attention, but someone who has thick skin, I guess, definitely, you know, someone's going to tell you something you're not going to like, and you have to be able to eat that. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, no, it, that's tough. perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when you went through a business, like how did you hook up with JGL? Was that like a relationship dad had at the farm or was it, what made you mm -hmm. take that route? No, it's actually funny. So when I was in university, I kind of thought the same thing as everybody. I'm going to go and get my egg business degree and I'm going to go sell chemical. And I'm going to go do soil tests and give recommendations because that's what everybody thought, right? And I actually had a prof uh, by the name of, his name's Clayton Miller. He taught me a class and I remember writing his final and he actually stepped into the hallway as I was leaving. And he said, have you thought about what you want to do when you're done school? And I said, well, probably just work in agronomy somewhere. And he said, don't. He said, there's so much more to the egg, the egg industry than just buying and selling chemicals. And that's one thing that always kind of really stuck with me. And, you know, this job was kind of by fluke. Um, I just kind of talked to a, someone who knew JGL was looking for a grain trader. And I didn't even know what a grain trader was at that time. Um, hooked up with this guy, sent in a resume, went for an interview, and they said, yeah, let's take a chance. And I mean, I got to work and I didn't know how you price grain, where it went, what it even meant, right? But, you know, it was that coming into work, sitting down, putting in the time and understanding how it works. And it, uh, it's really paid off. So that leads me to a question about job prospect in commodity trading. Are there a lot of jobs out there or is it more who you know and you know, need to work into a position like this? No, I think the biggest thing with this is just finding the right people and always willing to, to talk to someone or look, or look at, um, you know, or look at someone who's interested in doing what we're doing. The one thing with this job, it's, it's one thing that I don't think it's well known enough actually out in the industry, which is a little unfortunate because it is a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, it is rewarding. So, you know, we need to get this out to people to realize what's out here. And that there are some pretty cool jobs that we just need the right people to apply for. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. So if you were to wind the clock back a little bit, um, was there any point at which you would um, tell a student that, that they should investigate that? I mean, I know that professor pulled you aside and kind of steered you there, but is, is there a, uh, at some point where if you were a student again, you'd say, yeah, yeah, I should kind of focus that direction maybe. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, it depends. I mean, what, if I wind the clock back down where I was, well, you know what I was like in high school. I mean, where I was and where I am now, I mean, I wish I would have been a little more mature at my age to be like, I should get into this earlier. I wouldn't have got, I would have got into it at 22, 23, not 25. But I also think, you know, I just think the biggest thing as a kid, if I could give any advice to a student, try everything, you know, reach out to people that you don't really know. Like, you know, that guy that's coming to your dad's yard to look at cattle. Yeah. Okay. He's in a truck and he comes and looks at the cattle. He leaves the cattle leave, you know, ask these guys what they do for a living and how it works. 
and don't be afraid to try something that's out of your comfort level. Cause I mean, if you had told me sitting at 17 years old in high school that I was going to be sitting in an office for nine hours a day, I would have said, no way. I'm going to be out walking fields. I'm going to check things out. I'm going to be out driving around. And I think it's just trying to find something that you can grab onto and really enjoy. So like, you know, my biggest advice is go to school. Post-secondary education is important. Um, it's not what you learn in school. It's how you learn to learn, I guess is what I'll say. And it's the people that you meet along the way. That's very, very important. Like if I didn't have school, I honestly don't know what I'd be doing right now. Probably working in a wherever I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So it is important to get those connections and uh, get out of your comfort level a little bit, I guess is kind of what I'm getting at and just grab onto anything that you can. Thanks. Well, I think that's about it. Renette, any other thoughts? No, this was awesome. Thank you so much for, uh, for giving us some insight into this position. I, my husband and I farm and so we, we deal with commodity traders all the time, but you know, I, me personally, that's kind of my husband's thing. And so it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear, you know, your journey and, and what brought you to this too. So thank you so much for sharing that. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, it was quite the journey. And always, if you, uh, if anybody, if, if anyone ever has any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm always uh, too willing to talk to someone, you know, over the phone, face to face, if someone has any questions on, you know, more of what we do or how they can get involved. Um, you know, somebody wants to come sit with us for a week, you know, whatever you need, let us know and, you know, do our best to accommodate it. Great. Thanks again, Evan. Okay. I appreciate it. We will keep in touch. Yeah. There. Stop.